You spoke earlier about building a brand right. for your people. What does that entail? You know, it, it entails a lot. Mr. Kevin Kelly, thank you for being here. Welcome to Members Only. All right. And before we get into this amazing interview, um, word on the streets is, is that you are the man from here to Japan. <laughs> is that fact or fiction? That, that's, that's fiction. You know, the people that I serve, those are the men and women, but it's definitely not me. <laughs> Ten four. For those who do not know, um, who is Kevin Kelly? Uh, Kevin Kelly is a businessman. Um, I guess we're talking because I own a restaurant called Kitchen and Cocktails, but my primary trade is as an attorney. I own a law firm called the Kelly Law Firm, and we've represented people across the country for a number of years, and we've gotten over half a billion dollars from them uh, in lawsuits. So that's primarily what I do. I own real estate, I have investments in the market, but uh, the restaurant is a new hot thing that people like to talk about. For me, it's a hobby, but I, I really enjoy it, and I, I love the excitement that it's brought to Dallas. What an amazing hobby. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wow, and um, the brand is beyond phenomenal. Thank you very um, much. My, my, my first question to you is, um, first, when was Kelly Law Firm established? Uh, the law firm started in 2016. Okay. I had a law firm before then that started in 2003 uh, that rolled for a while, and then the Kelly Law Firm was the offshoot from that, and it's been doing great. Uh, we've got about 30 professionals upstairs that are lawyers, paralegals, marketers, and all 30 are minorities, so it's a unique situation that we have. We love it. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Dallas. Born and raised? Yeah, I'm a Dallas guy. I was born in Arkansas, but I'm a Metroplex kid. Ah. I went to elementary school in Dallas. I went to junior high in Richardson, uh, high school in Gar Garland, college in Oak Cliff at Paul Quinn College, law school at the University of Houston, and then I came back to Dallas. Wow. What were your dreams as a young man? <laughs> you know, it really depends on the stage in life. You know, ultimately I wanted to be successful. You know, I've got a mother who did a lot for me. Uh, she focused on education. I can recall being a kid and being in class with her at the University of Arkansas in Pine Bluff when she was getting her degree. Uh, I also remember being a kid and being in class with her when she was getting her master's degree. Uh, and, and so she's been a big motivation for me. You know, now that I'm older and I've got a couple sons who are 16 and who are 14, those guys motivate me too. But that's, that's really what I want. I want success so they can be in a good position, those that I love and care for. Mm -hmm. You spoke earlier about building a brand for your people. What does that entail? You know, it, it entails a lot. To answer your question, you know, when you talk about kitchen and cocktails, you know, I want to build a restaurant that people of color can be proud of. Um, now, my restaurant is inclusive of everyone. Anybody who wants to come here, we're going to treat you well and treat you great. Uh, but for our dem demographic, for black people, you know, when we get shrimp and grits, chicken and waffles, oftentimes we have to go to an unsafe part of town um, all the time. 99% of the time we go to buildings that aren't owned by us and this building is owned by me which is a unique thing and I hope that inspires people as well. Um, building a, a business and having a brand is an important thing. You know, We don't want to just be a restaurant where we have a name and we're known for our food. Uh, we want a logo that stands out as well. Uh, we want our staff to dress a certain way. We want our building to be proper as well. Uh, when you walk through this restaurant, the first thing you see is the Blue Onyx Bar. When you're upstairs in the Asset Lounge, you see the Black Marble Bar. On the other side, you see the White Panda Bookmatch Marble. You know, we wanted to invest in a food and beverage concept that had quality to it and that had care in every single element of this project. Uh, so from the uh, bird logo, to the flooring, to the, the furniture. You know, we put a lot of time and thought into making sure everything could be right, even including the lounge that we're sitting in now that we call the Asset Lounge. Uh, too often, uh, blacks and browns have been told that we're not important, that we don't add much to society. And so when the black and brown people come to this restaurant and they sit in this area, we want them to know that it's called the Asset Lounge, that you are an asset, that you are important, and, and this restaurant recognizes and appreciates that. And even on the way to this lounge, you know, you walk by a wall of historical figures, you see <clears throat> Michael Jordan, you see uh, Reginald Lewis, you see uh, Serena Williams, you see Beyonce, you see Barack Obama, uh, you see a lot of inspirational figures who have been successful before. Um, but even the athletes that you see, the entertainers, you see them in a professional format. So you don't see Jordan in his basketball uniform, you see him in a suit. And so for me, that's what I want this brand to be. I want it to encompass all those things that I talked about and ultimately the, the, the circle of those things uh, being something that surrounds our guests and makes our guests feel important when they come to Kitchen and Cocktails. Absolutely. Um, speaking more about the brand, what inspired you to create True Kitchen and Cocktails? Um, living in Europe. Uh, I lived in Europe for about five years, uh, about two years ago. And so I would work 10 days in the month in America and the other 20 days I would be in Europe. 
So during that time, I lived in Barcelona and I lived in Paris. And Paris especially really, really changed my view of the food and beverage world. You know, the restaurants I would go to in Paris, uh, Edern, Matignon, L'Avenue, those restaurants were phenomenal restaurants, but the vibe was always right. When I say the vibe, uh, the food was fantastic, but you always heard music. You always saw people having a good time and things were festive. And I said, you know, I love comfort food, but I can't have it in Paris. You know, I can have it in America, but I don't have that same vibe in America that I have in Paris. And so I want to try to bring all those things into one and make things happen so my guests can have a good time and enjoy themselves. How does it feel to have such, to receive such an, an, an immense response from establishing this brand? Because this brand is a hot commodity, sir. You know, the, the best answer for that is it's humbling. It's very, very humbling. I am, I'm thankful, I'm respectful, I'm appreciative of everyone who comes to this restaurant and who supported this restaurant. And so for me, you know, it's even a bit embarrassing in a way because I don't like attention even having this interview because there are so many other people um, that are responsible for this concept. And, and the number one group of people are the people who come in here and who support the restaurant. So I'm very, very thankful and I'm very, very humbled by people supporting the restaurant. True Kitchen and Cocktails, the menu. What's your favorite item on the menu? Right, well, actually, it's kitchen and cocktail. That's what we Excuse go by now. Kitchen and cocktail. So and no cocktails. more true? No more true. No more true. Really? It was true at first, but then we had a dispute with True Food Kitchen. And ah, a lot of people have asked that, so it's right. good you brought that up now. And so what happened is a number of our customers were going to their restaurant and becoming frustrated. And True Food Kitchen, uh, I believe, didn't want our customer base in their restaurants. And so with our brand being new, we said we're going to switch it up and it'll be Kitchen and Cocktails by Kevin Kelly. Mm. And so that'll be the stamp and brand that we stick by at all points. But it's been great for us, though. I love it. So what's, the, what's your favorite item on the menu? Favorite item, item on the menu is the uh, shrimp and grits with a fried lobster tail on top. I love it. And my favorite drink is a True Flame. We put three types of alcohol in it, they light it on, fly, on fire, and they put it back and forth in front of you. Both those together are phenomenal. Would you consider yourself a visionary? Uh, maybe. I think I've got a team of visionaries. I think I've got a strong team that work with me. And, and these guys come up with so many ideas and so many concepts, and these women are so phenomenal and so detail-oriented to make sure things go, go well. And so I think I've got a team of people that are visionaries. Due to the pandemic that we face from last year, coming into this year, has it been a challenge to keep the brand running, um, to just stay afloat, have the doors open to where you can continue to feed the people? You know, for us, it hasn't been a challenge. You know, we've only decided to look at the positive aspects of the pandemic. Uh, the positive aspects being opening a restaurant that allowed us to employ 100 people that the most, for the most part are black and brown. And a lot of these people didn't have jobs before they came to us, so that's a positive for us. Um, our management team, our general manager is a black man, our AGM is an Asian woman. Our other managers are a black woman, black woman, Hispanic man, our uh, chef is a black woman, sous chef is a black woman. And so we've created opportunities through this pandemic for people that didn't have them before. So, you know, it's, 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 it's been something that we've tried to react to positively. Um, now, in terms of business and service, you know, I think it's made us better as well because we went into this concept and we opened on August the 21st in the middle of the pandemic. And so we chose to move forward, but we required a better business of ourselves. So we had to put more time, more planning into it, more processes to ensure that even though there was COVID-19 we were dealing with, that it wouldn't stop us and it hadn't stopped us and we don't intend for it to stop us. And that's amazing. And we look forward to seeing this brand continue to grow. Um, will, you, will you consider um, opening more kitchen and cocktails in different cities, countries? For sure. Yeah. That's in the works now. Okay. That's in the works now. Is it premature to ask what maybe maybe the next city we're going to? Uh, I, well, I haven't announced it, but we're working on Chicago right now. Nice. So we spent some time there, and our hopes is that we'll be in Chicago by the end of the summer. Okay. My last question to you, uh, Mr. Kelly, is how do you define success? You know, um, for me, success... Well, I have to give you my own definition. Please. Um, because success is such a general term and it means something different for each person. But for me, success means being able to take care of those that I love. Uh, my family, being able to make sure their household is, is taken care of, making sure that uh, my mother's fine, my father's fine, the other people are connected with me, making sure they're okay. Um, I've got a, a strong team of generals that work with me, and I love these guys, and they love me. We've been together for 20 plus years. Uh, Chris Petrie, Mike Ashton, Aaron Brown, making sure those guys are good because they're, they're making what they want to make, and they're successful in their own way with opportunities also. Uh, success for me means giving opportunities to other people as well. You know, walking into this restaurant and seeing people who didn't have jobs before us is a sign of success for me. 
uh, going upstairs to the law firm and seeing Patricia, Patricia Morgan, who's my number one person, uh, but she's a black female. That's success to me as well. And so uh, success is giving back to others in a lot, but it's also making sure that I accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. Success is making sure my kids see this project and understand what's going on, making sure they understand the metrics, the data, the finances associated with this. So at 16 and 14, they're much sharper than I was at the same age. So uh, for me, that's success. Well said, sir. Um, we thank you so much for your time today. But before we leave, is it possible we can get a side of macaroni and cheese with the yams? <laughs> I think we can do better than that. How about you guys look at the menu, figure out what you want, and we'll get a, back, a package to go for you guys. You guys can eat here if you want to. You know, this Amen restaurant is for that. you guys. My house is your house. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, you, you are a gem, sir. Thank you very much. And we thank you for being a part of Members Only.